British journalist Graham Phillips has been deported from Ukraine and banned from entering the country for three years on the grounds that he's been working for RT. He'd been held in captivity by the security services for three days after going missing while covering the conflict in the east. And we now have the chance to speak live to Graham, who joins us uh, from Poland. Graham, it's good to see that you're, uh, you're alive and well. RT lost contact with you uh, earlier this week. We had no communication for three days. Just tell us what happened. I was taken by the Ukrainian military um, at Donetsk airport on Tuesday night. Um, there was held in captivity uh, by them. I was put in a room next to an artillery position that they were firing heavily from that was being fired on. Uh, I was kept in a cell. I was uh, detained along with another journalist, Vadim, who was beaten in front of me. Um, I saw soldiers, you know, kick him in the face. And then a soldier uh, said that if he couldn't confirm my details, then he couldn't guarantee that I was going to live. Uh, I was blindfolded, um, we were kept in a cell without uh, water or toilet facilities uh, and then we were separated, I was interrogated, uh, I was interrogated all day, I was called a terrorist, um, I was told that um, I had a Russian passport, that I was a Russian spy, uh, they were telling me all day that I hadn't entered Ukraine, uh, through Ukraine, I'd entered it through Russia, it's all completely, completely false, they were accusing me of working for terrorists, all of these accusations and interrogations. Um, and then they took my computer, they took my things, and I've just uh, got out. I've just recently been released, and I was on the train to Warsaw. I've come from the Polish border, and I've just recently discovered that, that now all of my accounts have been hey, hacked. So my shot. Twitter account, my email account, my YouTube account, which is obviously my main livelihood, someone has deleted uh, 2,000 videos from that. So every single account I have, Facebook, for contact uh, the time that the Ukrainian forces have had my uh, computer, it was held by the SBU as well. They've, they've taken that, they've stripped all the passwords. So I've now basically been uh, cyber attacked. And I'm just fighting now to try and uh, get my life back, having been kicked out of the country of Ukraine. My car was taken by the Ukrainian military. My money was taken. Uh, my bulletproof vest. I've been uh, deported from a country that I own a flat in uh, and told that I'm, I'm an enemy of the state when all I ever did there was report the news, was report the truth. Um, and I've been told, I've been obviously banned from th uh, for three years, kicked out, put at the border, and then I've been cyber attacked. So basically, you know, my entire life has been has been taken apart. I mean, thankfully, I'm, I'm alive and, 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 as you can see, I'm effectively all right, but I'm a little uh, shell-shocked by the whole experience and just trying to kind of get my bearings and get things uh, back together after what was uh, an ordeal, um, uh, really was, over three days that was then transferred to SBU in Zaporozhye, further interrogations, further accusations made, and then taken to Kiev and then put in a van and taken to the border, uh, told I was deported and banned for three years. Uh, and I mean, you know, I, I can't comprehend this. I was called, uh, I've been called an enemy of the state. You know, I, I was the journalist two years ago when every other journalist was saying, don't come to Ukraine for Euro 2012. I was the one writing articles that you should come to Ukraine, defending Ukraine, praising Ukraine. But, you know, now the Ukraine that we have, what can, what can you say in praise of Ukraine? This is a Ukraine that's had a violent revolution, installed a coup government which has instigated a civil war which has seen hundreds, perhaps thousands of civilians killed in the east of Ukraine, a, a country which has collapsed, an economy which has collapsed. I don't even know what Ukraine is anymore to even be banned. We were in the car and they were telling me that if the government changed Changes, then the ban might not be valid and of course the government dissolved as we were even traveling to the border the coalition collapsed yesterday so it's hard to even know what Ukraine is but whatever it is they tell me that I'm banned for three years um, and that was the only reason given is that I work for RT uh, which they say is enemy um, enemy material which is an enemy agent um, and I defended myself at the border but I mean, there was no representation given to me. There was no opportunity uh, to make my defence in any way that would have had any meaningful impact. All I could do was, was say that I'm a journalist. I've only ever reported the truth. Graham, in Ukraine, Graham, I've only ever let's, reported let's talk what about, I've seen. Let's talk and, about and the... This is now the punishment. Is I've been persecuted and Let's deported. talk about what, what, what happened to you uh, in terms of how you were treated during your time in captivity. You say you had a number of your uh, belongings and your possessions taken. How are you supporting yourself now? What was taken and, and, and what are you doing to, to support yourself right now? Well, you know, RT, thankfully, have, um, you know, have, have got my back, have come to me. I mean, I was put out at a place that I didn't even know where I was. 
Um, I wasn't allowed to contact anyone for that time. I mean, they were sending messages from my phone. That message that you got, RT, saying all is fine, I didn't, I didn't send that message. They were going through my messages, uh, asking me about every single message. Who sent this to you? Who's this person? How do you know this person? And then they've obviously had my computer and they've stripped and they've taken all my passwords and it was, it was one by one. It was my contact to begin with, then it was my Facebook. And then I was on a train, so I've been offline, and then I've come out and my, uh, my email account has been hacked. And, you know, my YouTube account, which is, I mean, you know what I do is videos, and I put them up, and I had 2,500, and, and they've deleted 2,000. They've uh, hacked my Twitter. They've been putting uh, Ukraine propaganda in my Twitter account. So, you know, I'd come out the other side, as you can see, you know, I haven't shaved for uh, a lot of days, I haven't, I haven't showered, um, I'm just trying to kind of get my life uh, back together, um, I'm, and I'm still being attacked, I mean, I'm still now, um, I'm sure I'll, I'll bring my computer out and there'll be further attacks, further cyber attacks, so I'm still under attack, even though I'm out of Ukraine and, um, and just trying to kind of keep on... And, uh, and, you know, kind of get through this. And, uh, I mean, you know, thankfully, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm alive and, and OK, and Vadim was also released. I mean, he was beaten in front of me. This is, a, this is a boy. You know, Ukrainian soldiers got him on the ground. They were kicking his face. And I was saying to them, look, stop, stop. And then they turned to me and said, you know, you're not English, uh, you're Russian. And then the soldiers, you know, they were finding out information about me online. And they were saying, you know, why are you working with with Russian terror, and I was saying, you know, you, under, you don't understand. You're not fighting Russians in Donetsk. You're not fighting Russians. You're fighting people from Donetsk. And they were saying to me, no, everyone there, you know, these are Russian terrorists. I've just come from Donetsk. These are Donetsk people who are defending themselves against an army which then it transpires. The Kiev government didn't even acknowledge that I was detained. The army doesn't even report to them. Is it even an army? You know, who even knows in Ukraine anymore? All it is is, is a catastrophe. I just returned to work there. Uh, literally the day before. I was really, you know, pleased to be back with RT, who always been so supportive to me. I was pleased to be back in the field, and I still want to go back to work. You know, I'll, I'll get through this, and thank, you know, thankfully I've had the support of my colleagues at RT, and a lot of people have sent me uh, messages. A lot of people have, have come to my back. So, you know, we'll, we'll get through this. I'll keep on reporting. Uh, I'll get back to action. You know, this is... This is obviously, it's a hard time in Ukraine. You know, I wish I could be there covering the real news, covering the real story, getting that across with RT. But what's happened is persecution. I mean, you know, I was in Kiev. What have you got in Kiev? You've got flags of the European Union everywhere, flying flags of the European Union. And what's happened? This is persecution. This is an infringement. This is a direct violation of freedom of the press. This is persecution of journalists. This is an attack on freedom of speech. This is a direct contravention at every single level on these so-called European values, which uh, Ukraine seems to have so emphatically embraced that you have flags flying everywhere in Kiev for a European Union, which Ukraine is the absolute antithesis of at the moment, deporting a journalist from the country for only ever reporting the news on the basis that he works for an enemy agent, which is a news channel, which is RT, which is an objective news channel, which has reported consistently quality coverage throughout the conflict in Ukraine, in which now I'm not there to report because I don't report Ukrainian propaganda. So if you don't report Ukrainian propaganda, then you're deported from a country and it doesn't matter that you own a flat there. It doesn't matter that you have a, a life in that country. They deport you, they ban you, and that's it. You know, they take your car from you. They take your... I mean, they took my bulletproof vest. I was in a room uh, that was under shelling, and they had my bulletproof vest. And, you know, I've never seen that... I've never seen that again. You know, they, at least the one thing... Uh, they gave me my bank cards. I've been able to withdraw uh, uh, my funds, but you know, I'm, I'm sure that I'm in a login line now and find Graham. my bank accounts have been targeted because every single account that I have has been targeted. So, Graham. you know, that's that's how things are at the moment. But the main thing is, I want to get back to work. I want to get back in the field uh, and I want to get back to work. Um, thanks a lot for Graham. all the support that everyone has given me and shown me, and we'll get through this and keep on reporting, keep uh, on getting the it, news out. It's Real clearly story. been a difficult time. We appreciate you coming on, and we appreciate your time and your work, and uh, good luck with getting your life back in order. Graham Phillips, Thanks thank you very, very much, much for your time here on RT International. Thanks.